What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I am back with another Destiny 2 news video and today we're going to cover many things including 400 power level weapons from the prestige raid layers, the do's and don'ts, how you will hit 400 power level with armor, all new changes, solstice of heroes, loot and much much more people. But before we do that every month I am giving away a customizable controller. To enter the giveaway like this video and leave a comment down below and follow the Gleam link linked at the top of the video description. Fast, simple and legit. Good luck everybody. Okay so let's start with the prestige raid layers. So since the 1.2.3 update yesterday, Prestige Raid Layers are now available for you to compete in. These Raid Layers offer one random 400 power weapon, Raid Weapon upon completion, which is pretty cool. But this 400 level weapon can't be infused into standard legendary weapons. It can only be infused into exotics of the same archetype. So let's say you have a level 400 Midnight Coop drop. You can't infuse this into your Better Devils to make the Better Devils a power level 400. It just doesn't work. But you can infuse it into, let's say, the Crimson or the Sunshot. And if you try to be smart and infuse into the Exotic first, then try and infuse it into the Legendary. Oh, it does allow you, but the weapon won't increase past a 380 or a 385 with a mod, meaning you will lose that 400 power level weapon you got from the raid trying to do this. I saw a lot of people complaining about this on Twitter and before you knew it Bungie made a statement stating leading up to Forsaken the only way to achieve 400 power level is to earn and equip prestige red layer weapons and the solstice of heroes armor set. You will not be able to infuse these trophies into existing gear. Now to me, this is how I feel about this. Yes, it's great us who are at 385 power level having another number to chase, but if you are limited to only being able to wear said gear and not what you want, it becomes a little, well, pointless. I mean, some raid weapons are great. The Solstice for Heroes armor could be great. But what about all the other armor I like and want to rock, which I've tuned up with mods to be perfect for certain situations? What about that gear? Well, it kind of becomes irrelevant. When the Forsaken DLC drops in September, the power level rises to 600. This 400 gear will be completely pointless. And right now, 400 power level raid weapons being obtainable and you not being able to use that power uh, how you want. They are basically, like Bunchy say, just trophies. Nothing more, nothing less. And yeah, going by this statement as well by Bunchy, the Solstice armor will also be the same and you will not be able to infuse it into other gear. So let's move on to the Solstice of Heroes event, which starts on July 31st. We actually know a lot more about the event now, what it is, what it offers, and so forth. It was a day that was supposed to be a celebration of our past glories, the anniversary of Six Fronts, the victory that united the city and gave us the Vanguard, Guardians done ceremonial armour to commemorate the event, and gathered for a rousing speech by the speaker. Don't know what type of rousing is on about, but yeah, we'll go with it. Then everything came apart when the Red Legion struck. The tower fell, the city was lost, thousands of lives were lost with it. It was our lowest point since the collapse, but humanity is not so easily extinguished. We fought back, we recovered our lost light. With the awakening of the Traveller, we faced our conqueror and prevailed. We reclaimed our home, we entered a new golden age. That was almost a year ago. Now humanity is once again victorious against the overwhelming might of Ghoul and the Red Legion, against Penops and the infinite threat of the Vex, against Zor and the unfathomable hordes of the Hive. More than ever, the city is grateful for their seemingly invincible guardian protectors. And more than ever, humanity wants to show that gratitude. Solstice for Heroes begins Tuesday, July 31st. This event is held in the tower and allows the inhabitants of the city to celebrate and thank guardians for bravery defending them. During this time of the celebration, Guardians were once again done the now broken ceremonial armour from the day the city was lost to the Red Legion. They do this for many reasons, to remind themselves of what it's like not to be invincible, to challenge themselves and thus inspire the city even more, and to eventually reforge that broken gear into something stronger, just as humanity has been broken and reforged over and over again for hundreds of years. Guardians will meditate on their journey through the Red War and take on additional challenges in those memories. They will marvel at the resurgence of the Traveller as the elements of themselves flare into existence during their adventures and they will do it all while humanity celebrates their past, present and future. So that's basically the story behind the Solstice. Sounds quite cool, not gonna lie. I'm looking forward to it. 
Now, a coral ray is the tower's representative of the Solstice of Heroes event. She will direct you to the centre of the tower where the city has erected, erected really, the Statue of Heroes as a vocal point to the event. The statue will track your moments of triumph's progress, which we'll talk about in a second, and will grant you the Solstice of Heroes event armour that you will begin upgrading. So more about this armour which you can see on the screen now. After you upgrade your Shattered set, you will receive the Rekindled set at power level 340, with a new list of objectives. Once you complete those objectives, your reward is the Replendant armour set at power level 400, with one final group of objectives to complete and you'll unlock the masterwork version of the armor set, pretty cool. If you love the way the shattered or rekindled sets look and would rather show those off, we've got you covered. Each replendant armor set offers the previous versions as ornaments so you can pick and choose how each piece looks. One of the ways you'll be able to upgrade these armor sets is by doing the redux missions. Bungie have hand selected five story missions and given them some slight alterations. Each mission can be accessed in a tower by finding its statue. There are five missions and they are Homecoming, Spark, Payback, 1AU and Chosen. And these people are the armor sets and they sound pretty cool. And these are the way you level them up as you pick them up from the statue. As soon as you grab them from the statue, they have a few objectives which you need to complete. Once you do that, and upgrade that shattered set, you receive the rekindled set at a power level 340 with a new list of objectives. Once you complete those objectives, your reward is the replendant set, which are power level 400, with one final group of objectives to complete, which will unlock you the masterwork versions, which is epic! So yeah, people, I do look forward to this event. It sounds pretty cool, not gonna lie. Also, people, don't forget about the Moments of Triumph. Many of you have already begun completing your Moments of Triumph, currently being tracked on Bungie.net. The final five Triumphs will be available at the beginning of the Solstice for Heroes event and can be tracked in-game. Your Triumphs will be tracked in-game by bounties that are obtained by the Statue of Heroes. As you complete and turn in those bounties, you will unlock rewards that can be redeemed at the Statue. So let's check out a few of these rewards and look at this exotic ship looking absolutely great people there are also more rewards too and there's also a solstice engram available from tess everest which you could have put money on which actually you probably have to put money on you can earn three per account by completing the event milestone on each of your characters no matter what activities you play in destiny 2 during the solstice of heroes you will receive one solstice engram in addition to the bright engram you earn for leveling up so that's pretty epic too. Here's a look at some of those rewards from that Solstice Ingram. I mean, damn people, just look at some of these. The emotes for starters look great. Look at that fishing emote, absolutely incredible. But look at that sparrow people, amazing. And the ghost shell, wow, just wow. Notice there's also three new exotic ornaments. One for the stern, one for the Suze regime, and one for the jade rabbit. Another thing these engrams offer are armor glows. These can be applied to any version of the Solstice of Heroes armor sets to provide guardians with an enhanced look. Armor glows are unlocked permanently, like ornaments, and they shine brightest when your subclass element aligns with the element of the glow. Pretty damn cool. And so far, people, that's all we know about the Solstice of Heroes event, which arrives on July 31st. I cannot wait, people. I really can't. I mean, I ain't really fussed about the Prestige Raid layers. I just want new things to do and chase. And the Solstice of Heroes seems to be delivering in that department. Okay, so moving on from this and other news you may have missed before we end the video. In an interview with Split Screen, Nathan Furian, the voice of K6, dropped a bomb. He confirmed what few people expected. Furian confirmed something Destiny fans had suspected. He did not play K6 during the E3 trailer, in which the robotic hunter's death was revealed. In fact, Fulian says he did not play K6 at all for this year's Forsaken expansion. Nolan North did. Nolan North plays K6. Wow! But Fulian is one of the many Destiny 2 players who don't believe that K6 is actually dead. So that's interesting in itself. So Cade within the Forsaken will not be played by Nathan Fulian, but by Nolan North. I do look forward to hearing how he sounds, I'm not going to lie. But he also states he does not believe K6 is dead. Well, that's something we won't go into here, people. I've made a few videos talking about this subject. We will find out. That's all I'm saying. We will find out. And on that note, guys, I am out. If you guys enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps me and my channel out. And I do appreciate the support. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, people, I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong.
never get it right.